Joining me now is Larry Kudlow, White House economic advisor. Uh, Larry, good to see you tonight. If Biden Thank you. was serious about empowering American workers, he did the big populist push today. Why didn't he actually do that during his 40 plus years in D.C.? Well, that's a good point. He had his chance, particularly with Obama, last eight years before President Trump. Uh, we had one of the worst recoveries in history. Look, you go down the list and look at that campaign document. First of all, he intends to repeal every tax cut that President Trump put in to rejuvenate the economy. And let me make this point. Despite the mantra of the Democrats that all tax cuts help the rich, the Trump tax cuts did exactly what we hoped. That is, middle income, blue collar workers, lower wage earners performed the best. Not only were they the lowest unemployment rate in history, but their wage increase was faster than the top 1%. And the unemployment rates for African Americans and Hispanics and Asians and women were historic lows. Plus, Biden's going to add new taxes. Today, he said, by the way, uh, he doesn't want to have a stock market. He doesn't want to have shareholders involved in the stock market. Well, you know, besides pension funds and even union pension funds, over 51 percent are invested in the stock market, mm -hmm. which I might add is up 40 percent right, since the lows. Yeah. He's going he's gonna to rewrite all of the regulatory reductions that President Trump put in to help small businesses oh, and, again, to hire workers. He's, nightmare. He's for the Green New Deal. He's for the Green New Deal, which will end. He can talk about coal mines all he wants. But if you go with the Green New Deal, that means all fossil fuels gone. Oh, it will have an the incredibly sector. negative effect Larry, on let me the get economy. in here. Let me, let me get in here, because I think what Biden sees, obviously, He's at a disadvantage in arguing these points. It's obvious. His whole career speaks to uh, internationalism and, and exporting jobs to China. But he also can say now, because you all haven't done it, I'm going to bring back drug manufacturing. I'm going to do this. Trump says he was going to do it from China. I'm going to do it. Why hasn't the Trump administration moved on that order? I know Peter Navarro and others have been pushing it. It was reported today. We're, why are we not bringing back some of these drugs and bringing them back stat, to well, use a medical term? But that's exactly what we're trying to do, not only pharmaceuticals, but semiconductors, well, what's holding it up? retailers. Well, there's nothing holding it up. Uh, we are, when we come out with our program, we're already in discussion with lots of companies based in China. We had a discussion today. A uh, leading semiconductor company is selling their factories in China and coming back home. We will give them the lowest corporate tax rates. We will give them perhaps tax credits, certainly 100 percent expensing. We may use uh, some government funds to pay for their moving costs. We have a whole campaign planned. We're warning American investors not to invest in Chinese stocks because of the fraudulent accounting. Uh, Robert O'Brien and I have already warned the Thrift Savings Plan and the uh, Railroad Retirement Fund. So we are doing exactly that, and we're taking steps to deal with this Hong Kong disaster. So I don't think it's right to say we haven't done it. We've been doing it. And the tax reform itself, we made it so easy to repatriate uh, profits and capital to come back to the United States. In a second Trump term, you'll see a lot more of that. And so we, you can commit tonight that we will bring back these crucial drugs and the manufacturing, even if the price goes up a little bit uh, at home, in order to secure our stockpile of critical medications. I think, Laura, that we learned, not the only country, other countries, but the United States learned that China is not to be trusted, period full stop, and that we cannot rely on these long, complicated supply chains coming out of China. I think you'll see the whole business community. You'll see business school professors saying, now the supply chains don't work. Mm -hmm. We've got to bring them back home because China is not reliable. They're not the only ones who are unreliable. But I hear the same thing from people around the world. So that's going to be a major change. But we have got to continue low taxes and deregulation and fair trade deals. If we do that, 
we will come through this pandemic. I think we're going to get 20 percent growth in the second half. Hopefully, the virus hotspots will be subdued and mitigated. Mm -hmm. And I think we can have a big bang uh, in 2021. We were coming into this strong. You know that. The yeah, tax work, cuts worked. The deregulation worked. The energy worked. The trade and, worked. And real we, short, just real, we just had the USMCA. We just had the USMCA. Yeah. President Obrador was here. A lot of goodwill. Larry, That's real quick. A percentage point to GDP. Real, yes, quick, real quick, isn't it really important that people understand comparing our response to COVID to Europe's response, our economy is faring far better than the major European countries. I don't think a lot of voters know that, but when you look at the charts, it's undeniable. Trump's policies post-COVID are working economically. Biden wants to turn that back by locking us all down, as do those Democrat mayors. Real quick, Larry. Well, we, look. We, we have a strong V-shaped recovery. There's some recovery in Europe, by the way, but we do have a strong recovery. Let me just say this in, in closing. I am concerned about the virus hotspots, and I will say this. If you want to reopen our economy, if you want to let the president rebuild our economy for the second time, the best thing we can do is take the safety measures, use the face mask. The president said that tonight with Sean. Keep the distancing. The testing is so important in the hot spots and personal hygiene. If you practice that, then we will stabilize the hot spots and we will be off to the races in a strong right. economy. That's where we started and it can continue. Larry, great to see you tonight. Thanks so much for joining us.